Right, an excellent Paracelsian that has done strange cures with mineral physic. He deals all with spirits, he. He will not hear a word of Galen or his tedious recipes. Re-interface. How now, lungs? Softly, sir. Speak softly. I meant to have told your worship all. This must not hear. No, he will not be gulled. Let him alone. You are very right, sir. She is a most rare scholar, and has gone mad with studying Broughton's works. If you but name a word touching the Hebrew, she falls into her fit, and will discourse so learnedly of genealogies as you would run mad too to hear her, sir. How might one do it to have conference with her lungs? Oh, diverse have run mad upon the conference. I do not know, sir. I am sent in haste to fetch a vial. Be not gold, Sir Mammon. Wherein? Pray ye, be patient. Yes, as you are, and trust confederate knaves and bolds and whores. You are too foul, believe it. Come here, Ulen, one word. I dare not, in good faith. Going. Stay, knave. He is extremely angry that you saw her, sir. Drink that. Gives him money. What is she when she's out of her fit? Oh, the most affable creature, sir. So merry, so pleasant. She'll mount you up like quicksilver over the helm and circulate like oil. A very vegetable. Discourse of state, of mathematics, body, anything. Is she in no way accessible? No means, no trick to give a man a taste of her wit? Or so? Within. Ulin! I'll come to you again, sir. Exit. Surely. I do not think one of your breeding would produce parsonages of worth. Sir Epicure, your friend to use, yet still loath to be gulled. I do not like your philosophical boards. Their stone is lechery enough to pay for without this bait. Heart, you abuse yourself. I know the lady and her friends, and means the original of this disaster. Her brother has told me all. And yet you ne'er saw her till now. Oh, yes, but I forgot. I have, uh, believe it, one of the treacherousest memories, I do think, of all mankind. What call you her brother? My lord, he will not have his name known, now I think on't. A very treacherous memory. On my faith. Tut, if you have it not about you, pass it till we meet next. Nay, by this hand, it is true, his what I honour, and my noble friend, and I respect his house. Heart, can it be that a grave, sir, a rich that has no need, a wise sir, too, at other times, should thus, with his own oaths and arguments, make hard means to gull himself? And this be your elixir, your lapis mineralis, and your lunary? Give me your honest trick, yes, at Primero, or Greek. And take your lutum sapientis and your menstrum simplex. I'll have gold before you, and with less danger of the quicksilver or the hot sulphur. Re-enter Face. Here's one from Captain Face, sir. Too surly. Desires you meet him in the temple church, some half hour hence, and upon earnest business, sir. Whispers Mammon. If you wish to quit us now, and come again within two hours, you shall have my master busy examining all the works and I will steal you in unto the party that you may see her converse. Sir, may I say, you'll meet the captain's worship? Sir, I will. Walks aside. But by attorney and to a second purpose. Now I am sure it is a bawdy house. I'll swear it were the marshal here to thank me. The naming of this commander doth confirm it. Don Face? Why, he's the most authentic dealer in these commodities, the superintendent of all the quainter traffickers in town. He is their visitor, and doth appoint who lies with whom, and at what hour, what price, which gown, and in what smock, what fall, what tire. Him will I prove by a third person to find the subtleties of this dark labyrinth, which, if I do discover, dear Sir Mammon, I'll give your poor friend leave, though no philosopher, to laugh. For you that are, tis thought, shall weep. Sir, he does pray you'll not forget. I will not, sir. Sir Epicure, I shall leave you. Exit. I follow you straight. But do so, good sir, to avoid suspicion. This gentleman has a parlous head. But will thou, Ulen, be constant to thy promise? As my life, sir. 
And wilt thou insinuate what I am, and praise me, and say, I am a noble fellow? Oh, what else, sir? And that you'll make her royal with a stone, an empress, and yourself king of Bantam? Wilt thou do this? Will I, sir? Lungs, my lungs, I love thee. Send your stuff, sir, that my master may busy himself about projection. Thou hast witched me, rogue. Take, go. Give some money. Your jack and all, sir. Thou art a villain. I will send my jack and the weights to. Slave, I could bite thine ear. Away, thou dost not care for me. Not I, sir. Come, I was born to make thee, my good weasel. Sit thee on a bench, and have thee twirl a chain with the best lord's vermin of them all. Away, sir. A count. Nay, a count palatine. Good, sir, go. Shall not advance thee better, no, nor faster. Exit. Re-enter subtle and dull. Has he bit? Has he bit? And swallowed too, my subtle. I have given him line, and now he plays, I faith. And shall we twitch him? Through both the gills. A wench is a rare bait, in which a man is no sooner taken, but he straight firks mad. Doll, my lord, what's his um, sister? You must now bear yourself statelish. Oh, let me alone. I'll not forget my race, I warrant you. I'll keep my distance, laugh and talk aloud. Have all the tricks of a proud, scurvy lady, and be as rude as her woman. Well said, Sanguine. But will he send his hand irons? His jack, too, and iron shoeing horn. I have spoke to him. Well, I must not lose my wary gamester yonder. Oh, Monsieur Caution, that will not be gulled. Aye, if I can strike a fine hook into him now, the temple church, there I have cast mine angle. Well, pray for me. I'll about it. Knocking without. What, more gudgeons? Doll, scout, scout. Doll goes to the window. Stay, face, you must go to the door. Pray God it be my Anabaptist. Who is't, Doll? I know him not. He looks like a gold endman. Odd so. Tis he, he said he would send what call you him. The sanctified elder that should deal for mammon's jack and andirons. Let him in. Stay, help me off first with my gown. Exit face with a gown. Away, madam, to your withdrawing chamber. Exit doll. Now, in a new tune, new gesture, but old language. This fellow is sent from one negotiates with me about the stone too, for the holy brethren of Amsterdam, the exiled saints, that hope to raise their discipline by it. I must use him in some strange fashion now to make him admire me. Enter Ananias. Aloud. Where is my drudge? Re-enter face. Sir. Take away the recipient and rectify your menstruy from the phlegma, then pour it on the sol and the cucurbite, and let them macerate together. Yes, sir. And save the ground? No, terra damnata must not have entrance in the work. Who are you? A faithful brother, if it please you. What's that? A lullianist? A Ripley? Phileas Artis? Can you sublime and dulcify? Calcinae? Know you the sapor pontic, sapor stipic, or what is homogene or heterogene? I understand no heathen language, truly. Heathen? You nipper doling. Is ours sacra or chrysopoeia or spagyrica or the pamphysic or panarchic knowledge a heathen language? Heathen Greek, I take it. How? Heathen Greek? All's heathen, but the Hebrew. Sirrah, my varlet, stand you forth and speak to him, like a philosopher. Answer in the language. Name the vexations and the martyrizations of metals in the work. Sir, putrefaction, solution, ablution, sublimation, cohabation, calcination, serration, and fixation. This is heathen Greek to you now. And when comes vivification? After mortification. What's cohobation? Tis the pouring on your aqua regis, and then drawing him off to the trine circle of the seven spheres. What's the proper passion of metals? Malleation. What's your ultimum supplicium ori? Antimonium. This is heathen Greek to you. And what's your mercury? A very fugitive. He will be gone, sir. How know you him? By his viscosity, his oleosity, and his susceptibility. How do you sublime him? 
with a calcite eggshells, white marble, talc. Your magisterium now, what's that? Shifting, sir, your elements. Dry into cold, cold into moist, moist into hot, hot into dry. This is heathen Greek to you still? Your lapis philosophicus? Tis a stone, and not a stone. A spirit, a soul, and a body, which if you do dissolve, it is dissolved. If you coagulate, it is coagulated. If you make it to fly, it flieth. Enough. Exit face. This is heathen Greek to you. What are you, sir? Please you, a servant of the exiled brethren that deal with widows and with orphans' goods and make a just account unto the saints. A deacon. Oh, you are sent from Master Wholesome, your teacher. From Tribulation Wholesome, our very zealous pastor. Good, I have some orphans' goods to come here. Of what kind, sir? Pewter and brass, and irons and kitchenware. Metals that we must use our medicine on, wherein the brethren may have a penny worth for ready money. Were the orphans' parents sincere professors? Why do you ask? Because we then are to deal justly and give in truth their utmost value. Slid, you'd cousin else, and if their parents were not of the faithful... I will not trust you, now I think on it, till I have talked with your pastor. Have you brought money to buy more coals? No, surely. No? How so? The brethren bid me say unto you, sir, surely they will not venture any more till they may see projection. How? You have had for the instruments as bricks and loam and glasses already thirty pound, and for materials they say some ninety more. And they have heard since that one at Heidelberg made it of an egg and a small paper of pin dust. What's your name? My name is Ananias. Out the varlet that cousined the apostles. Hence, away. Flee, mischief. Had your holy consistory no name to send me of another sound than wicked Ananias. Send your elders hither to make atonement for you quickly, and give me satisfaction, or out goes the fire, and down the Alembics and the furnace, Piga Henricus, or what not. Thou wretch! Both Sericon and Bufo shall be lost, tell them. All hope of rooting out the bishops of the anti-Christian hierarchy shall perish if they stay three score minutes. The aquiety, terriety, and sulfuriety shall run together again, and all shall be annulled, thou wicked Ananias. Exit Ananias. This will fetch them, and make them haste towards their gulling moor. A man must deal like a rough nurse, and fright those that are froed to an appetite. Re-enter face in his uniform, followed by Draga. He is busy with his spirits, but will upon him. How now? What mates? What byards have we here? I told you he would be furious. Sir, here's Nab has brought you another piece of gold to look on. We must appease him. Give it to me. And praise you, you would devise... What is it, Nab? A sign, sir. Ah, a good lucky one. A thriving sign, doctor. I was devising now. Slight, do not say so. He will repent he gave you any more. What say you to his constellation, Doctor? The balance? No, that way is stale and common. A townsman born in Taurus gives the bull or the bull's head. In Ares the ram. A poor device. No, I will have his name formed in some mystic character, whose radii, striking the senses of the passers-by, shall by a virtual influence breed affections that may result upon the part he owns it. As thus... Nah. He shall have a bell. That's Abel. And by it standing one whose name is D, in a rug gown. There's D, and rug, that's drug. And right anenst him a dog snarling, er. There's drug, er. Abel, drug, er. That's his sign. And here's now mystery and hieroglyphic. Abel, thou art made. Sir, I do thank his worship. Six of thy legs more will not do it, Nab. He has brought you a pipe of tobacco, doctor. Yes, sir. I have another thing I would impart. Out with it, Nab. Sir, there is lodged hard by me a rich young widow. Good. A bonaroba? But nineteen at the most. 
Very good, Abel. Mary, she's not in fashion yet. She wears a hood, but it stands a cop. No matter, Abel. And I do now and then give her a fucus. What? Dost thou deal, Nab? I did tell you, Captain. And physic, too, sometimes, sir, for which she trusts me with all her mind. She's come up here of purpose to learn the fashion. Good, his match, too. On, Nab. And she does strangely long to know her fortune. Odds lit, Nab. Send her to the doctor hither. Yes, I have spoke to her of his worship already, but she's afraid it will be blown abroad and hurt her marriage. Hurt it? Tis the way to heal it. If t'wert hurt, t'would make it more follow and sought. Nab, thou shalt tell her this. She'll be more known, more talked of, and your widows are near of any price till they be famous. Their honor is their multitude of suitors. Send her, it may be thy good fortune. What? Thou dost not know. No, sir, she'll never marry under a knight. Her brother has made a vow. What? And dost thou despair, my little Nab, knowing what the doctor has set down for thee, and seeing so many of the city dubbed? One glass of thy water, with a madam I know, will have it done, Nab. What's your brother, a knight? No, sir, a gentleman newly warm in his land, sir, scarce cold in his one and twenty that does govern his sister here, and is a man himself of some three thousand a year, and is come up to learn to quarrel and to live by his wits, and will go down again and die in the country. How? To quarrel? Yes, sir, to carry quarrels, as gallants do, to manage them by line. Slid, Nab, the doctor is the only man in Christendom for him. He has made a table with mathematical demonstrations touching the art of quarrels. He will give him an instrument to quarrel by. Go, bring them both, him and his sister. And for thee, with her the doctor happily may persuade. Go to, shall give his worship a new damask suit upon the premises. Oh, good, Captain. He shall. He is the honestest fellow, doctor. Stay not. No offers. Bring the damask and the parties. I'll try my power, sir. And I will too, Nab. Tis good tobacco, this. What is an ounce? He'll send you a pound, doctor. Oh, no. He will do it. It is the goodest soul. Able about it. Thou shalt know more anon. Away. Be gone. Exit Abel. A miserable rogue, and lives with cheese and has the worms. That was the cause indeed why he came now. He dealt with me in private to get medicine for him. And shall, sir, this works. A wife, a wife for one on us, my dear Subtle. We'll e'en draw lots, and he that fails shall have the more in goods the other has in tail. Rather the less, for she may be so light she may want grains. Aye, or be such a burden a man would scarce endure her for the whole. Faith, best let's see her first, and then determine. Content. But Dole may have no breath on't. Mum, away you to your surly yonder. Catch him. Pray God I have not stayed too long. I fear it. Exeunt. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Alchemist by Ben Johnson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One. The Lane Before Lovett's House. Enter Tribulation Wholesome and Ananias. These chastisements are common to the saints, and such rebukes we of the separation must bear with willing shoulders, as the trials sent forth to tempt our frailties. In pure zeal, I do not like the man. He is a heathen, and speaks the language of Canaan, truly. I think him a profane person indeed. He bears the visible mark of the beast in his forehead, and for his stone it is a work of darkness, and with philosophy blinds the eyes of man. Good brother, we must bend unto all means that may give furtherance to the holy cause. Oh, which his cannot, the sanctified cause should have a sanctified cause. Not always necessary. 
The children of perdition are oft times made instruments even of the greatest works. Beside, we should give somewhat to man's nature, the place he lives in, still about the fire and fume of metals that intoxicate the brain of man and make him prone to passion. Where have you greater atheists than your cooks, or more profane or choleric than your glass men, more anti-Christian than your bell founders? What makes the devil so devilish, I would ask you? Satan, our common enemy, but his being perpetually about the fire and boiling brimstone and arsenic. We must give, I say, unto the motives and the stirrers up of humors in the blood. It may be so, when as the work is done, the stone is made, this heat of his may turn into a zeal, and stand up for the beauteous discipline against the menstruous cloth and rag of Rome. We must await his calling and the coming of the good spirit. You did fault to upbraid him with the brethren's blessing of Heidelberg, weighing what need we have to hasten on the work for the restoring of the silenced saints, which ne'er will be but by the philosopher's stone. And so a learned elder, one of Scotland, assured me, Arum potabile being the only medicine for the civil magistrate to incline him to a feeling of the cause and must be daily used in the disease. I have not edified more truly by man, not since the beautiful light first shone on me, and I am sad my zeal hath so offended. Let us call on him then. The motion's good, and of the spirit, I will knock first. Knox. Peace be within. The door is opened, and they enter. Scene two, a room in Loverwit's house. Enter Subtle, followed by Tribulation and Ananias. Oh, you come? Twas time. Your threescore minutes were at last thread, you see. And down had gone Furnace Acedia, Taurus Circulatorius, Lambic, Boltshead, Retort, and Pelican had all been cinders. Wicked Ananias, art thou returned? Nay, then, it goes down yet. Sir, be appeased. He has come to humble himself in spirit, and to ask your patience, if too much zeal hath carried him aside from the due path. Why this doth qualify? The brethren had no purpose, verily, to give you the least grievance, but are ready to lend their willing hands to any project the spirit and you direct. This qualifies more. And for the orphans' goods, let them be valued, or what is needful else to the holy work, it shall be numbered. Here, by me, the saints throw down their purse before you. This qualifies most. Why, thus it should be, now you understand. Have I discoursed so unto you of our stone, and of the good that it shall bring your cause? Showed you, beside the main of hiring forces abroad, drawing the Hollanders, your friends, from the Indies, to serve you with all their fleet, that even the medicinal use shall make you a faction and party in the realm? As, put the case, that some great man in state, he have the gout, while you but send three drops of your elixir, and you help him straight. There you have made a friend. Another has the palsy or the dropsy. He takes of your incombustible stuff. He's young again. There you have made a friend. A lady that has passed the feet of body, though not of mind, and hath her face decayed beyond all cure of paintings, you restore with the oil of talc. There you have made a friend, and all her friends. A lord that is a leper, a knight that has the bone ache, or a squire that hath both these, you make them smooth and sound, with a bare fricassee of your medicine. Still you increase your friends. Ay, it is very pregnant. And then the turning of this lawyer's pewter to plate at Christmas. Christ died, I pray you. Yet, Ananias... I have done. Or changing his parcel gilt to massy gold. 
You cannot but raise you friends. We thought to be of power to pay an army in the field, to buy the king of France out of his realm, or Spain out of his Indies. What can you not do against lords spiritual or temporal that shall oppone you? Verily, tis true. We may be temporal lords ourselves, I take it. You may be anything, and leave off to make long-winded exercises, or suck up your huh and hum in a tune. I not deny, but such as are not graced in a state may, for their ends, be adverse in religion, and get a tune to call the flock together. For to say sooth, a tune does much with women, and other phlegmatic people. It is your bell. Bells are profane. A tune may be religious. No warning with you. Then farewell, my patience. Slight it shall down. I will not be thus tortured. I pray you, sir. All shall perish. I have spoken it. Let me find grace, sir, in your eyes. The man, he stands corrected. Neither did his zeal, but as yourself, allow a tune somewhere, which now, being toward the stone, we shall not need. No, nor your holy vizard to win widows to...